My name is Michaela Hager. I am the owner and trainer for Canine Pipe Inspection. Canine Pipe Inspection. Boy, that is kind of an old school way to get leaks nowadays, but I love it. I, I think it's um, one of the more exciting things about oil and gas. So talk to me a little bit about um, just your current state of business. You know, everybody's talking about pipeline monitors and all these other things. So when I saw what you were doing, I thought, oh, I've got to get Mick on the air to talk about what she's doing. What a fantastic uh, um, little side niche area for the oil and gas industry. And I imagine other things too, but talk a little bit about just your current state of business. Do you mind doing that or? We have our chain on hand. It's more of a simple solution for a complex problem. Oftentimes, we are the ones that get called after technology fails, so to speak. Um, the leak isn't found, and companies are looking for other solutions. We have a minimum of two bugs that go on a job, and we have a proprietary odorant. That odorant is injected in the lines, which means we're versatile. We can be, our K-19s can be used on oil or gas pipelines. We're also great at finding illegal packs. These dogs are uh, really great at pinpointing leaks and finding small cracks also. Well, I think the the whole canine thing is absolutely remarkable. I mean, I've done stories before on... um, canines for finding uh, bombs as well as money in the backyard. People have hired canines to train them to go smell money, and they think some long-lost relative buried. I mean, it's amazing the different things that the canines can do. Do, do you Are you schooled at all? Are you versed at all to talk about the accuracy and the just sheer amazement that a canine has when it comes to sense? Are, are you able to talk about that? It's actually very surprising that canines aren't used more in this field. Their accuracy and ability just, it far exceeds any technology. You have technology that usually can find things at parts per million. These dogs are known to go well beyond parts per billion and even a molecular level. Their absolute accuracy to actually see these dogs work live is really amazing because they have been known to find pinhole leaks, um, cracks, the kind of thing that you wouldn't even expect them to find. And they can go down to the deepest depths of any existing pipeline. Now, I don't know if it's just because I am a former bloodhound owner, had one for a number of years and he passed away two years ago. And I think this is the first year where I feel like I'm able to actually have another dog now after my passing of my bloodhound. And he, he really gave me a whole new identity in terms of what they can bloodhounds bring. I also had a German shepherd. And so just the two of those dogs opened my eyes to really, um, just their amazing skills. They're absolutely amazing skills. And, uh, you, you know, I, I often joke that, you know, humans, the intelligent race. Well, I don't know so much about that when I get around some of those dogs. But um, how, how do oil companies react when you, when, when you pitch them or you talk to them about this type of technology? Because really it's, it's, a, it's a human, or it's an animal technology, I guess. And that's probably the biggest sell point is to have someone actually see it in action. It's almost immediate believers once they actually see it. But I can't show a piece of paper with numbers. I have to actually show the real life action. And that's what makes it truly remarkable and believable when you see what these dogs can do. Has the uh, world of social media and uh, email and internet and everything like that, has has that been pretty beneficial for you in terms of sending maybe like a video of the dogs in action or something along those lines? Or do do they still need to see it firsthand and actually touch the dog and be around it? More of a tangible type of a thing as opposed to an electronic, you know, tool, I guess. what makes the strongest impression because everyone's going to go to what they naturally believe in and when 
these industries, these oil and gas industries have used technology for so long. To switch to something new, that feels like a risk. Although videos and photos are great, actually seeing it in action is what makes true believers in this. But I do make a point of posting as many videos as possible to just show and document what these dogs are capable of. How about when it comes to, you mentioned accuracy earlier, uh, talk to me about the team that you have, either from the human standpoint, from the training aspect or the maintenance aspect, and then the number of dogs. I think you mentioned you, you send out two dogs per per um, job or something along, is what I wrote down, two dogs. So explain that part of it too. Well, the biggest, most important employees of our company are our dogs. Our humans, they're the ones that are basically doing all the support work, but our dogs are doing the true work. And when we go on a job site, it is a minimum of two dogs, just pending scope of work. We'll bring in more dogs if necessary. And do you guys do ongoing training? Uh, I know that originally there's there's a training that's done, and then is there any secondary or additional afterwards, or is it that they just that it's now part of their existence? The most important aspect is our proprietary odor, and that we use is an incredibly efficient system, and it's industry approved odorant. Um, the amount of accuracy we get from this odorant system, once these dogs start on this training program, they're on it. And they're more or less, their work ethic is over and beyond. My dogs will actually beg by their work harnesses wanting to go out and work. And on top of that, this odorant system was actually developed and tested by Imperial Oil and Exxon Mobil. Okay, I get it. And then... You're based out of Idaho. You live in Idaho. Um, are there a number of shale plays that you're in? Do you guys just primarily stick around that region? Or talk to me about the geography behind where you're doing business and also where you'd be willing to do business because, hey, man, we, we live in a wired world, so somebody living down in Louisiana might hear this and might decide they want to give you a call and some of your dogs and that sort of thing. So talk to me a little bit about the geography behind where you're currently and where you'd like to do business. We're based in the north, but we offer nationwide services, and we have a rapid mobilization team plus an emergency response line. The moment that contract is signed, we are on the road. And we take that serious because most of our clients are down south below us, and it's not an issue. Dogs are very mobile, and they love to go. So we just load up, get down there, and get things going. By the time we're called, typically, time is money, and they want the problem solved quickly. So we respect that and basically make ourselves as available as possible to do that rapidly. Any final thoughts you might have? Anything that we missed out on? Anything that you feel we should reiterate? I'd like to give guests the final final word, if you will. That way it's not framed by me in any way. So the floor is yours. <laughs> well, like we were talking about, seeing is believing. We have social media with a lot of videos available showing what these dogs are capable of, and we post often. So feel free to check us out, Canine Pipe Inspections. You can find us on our website and all forms of social media, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter.